Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. Welcome to Beer Nuts, episode 160. Tonight we're going to review some porters. I think we did a porter episode like four or five years ago when we first started recording. But it's been a long time, so let's revisit porters. So, uh, we have... Five beer nuts this evening. We have uh, Ross joining us from Durham, North Carolina. Then we have uh, Greg and Uncle Pete is back with us, both from Michigan. And then Steve V and I are on location at the Shoal Brewery in Torrance, California. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to introduce everybody one by one. Uh, Looking forward to having some good quarters. So JR here, and I'm in Torrance, California with Steve V. Uh, uh, my last untacked check-in was last night. I visited the Green Cheek Beer Company in Orange, California, and enjoyed a Pet the Tiger IPA. It was fantastic. I'm going to hand it over to Steve V. Hello, everyone. Um, here in, at Scholb, uh, enjoying my f- first flight, almost halfway through already. Um, so my last check-in was here from Scholb. It was uh, Bien Dia. It's a... Uh, uh, Spanish style uh, uh, beer, and uh, it's kind of on their lighter side menu. It's a uh, house lager, crisp light, a um, little bit of creaminess as it goes down. Extremely drinkable, as they describe it. Yum. All right, then let's go back east to Ross and Dorm. Welcome back, Ross. Hey, great to be back. Uh, my last untapped check-in was actually a beer that I reviewed not too long ago, which was the Brewer's Breakfast from Hot Fly Brewing here in North Carolina. Um, it was kind of a, a nice little uh, uh, candy bar-themed stout um, that had a nice, uh, nice rich mouth feel. Uh, nice and smooth going down. Awesome. All right. And then back to Michigan to Greg. Oh, good evening, everybody. Greg in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, my last untapped check- check-in was out of Eau Claire, Wisconsin, from the brewing project. It was called, well, I should have had the Tyr- Tyrannosaurus Roar, which was a New England IPA with Citra, Mosaic, Motueka, and Galaxy Hops. It was pretty darn smooth and delicious. That's what they treat all right, and last but certainly not least, welcome back, Uncle Pete. Hey, Woo. thanks, JR. Hey, it's Uncle Pete in Rockwood, Michigan. Uh, my last untapped check-in was Metaform Strawberry, an IPA, a sour IPA from Holmes Brewery in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was delicious. Mm. Everything from Holmes usually is. So they can be jealous on that one, guys. That's the one thing I miss most from Michigan is my beer friends and the great breweries and beers from back there. But but okay, let's kick off the Porter Show. Uh, before uh, we get into the, tasting some beers, we just want to invite all our listeners to crack open a beer, no matter what you like, whether you're a Coors Light drinker or you're a seasoned veteran that likes a barrel-aged Saison. There's always room at our table for you. We're not pretentious beer snobs. The motto of our show has always been to introduce more good people to more good beer. So crack up with a cold one, and hopefully if you have a porter, open one up, and we're going to turn it over to Uncle Pete for the first beer of the evening. All right. Much appreciated and much looked forward to finally getting back into the swing of things. 
Uh, what I've got tonight, and I wish I had it to share, I'm sorry in advance, but uh, actually this is a porter that I made myself, and uh, I brewed it in um, December and uh, bottled it in January, and uh, I've been drinking it ever since, and I'm getting low already. On I had about two and a half cases. I think I'm down to half a case. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but anyway, this is a clone of the Edmund Fitzgerald Porter from Great Lakes Brewing. And if you've ever had that one, uh, it is a full-flavored uh, classic porter in my book. Uh, right up there with Black Butte Porter from uh, uh, my friends up there in uh, Oregon. Oh, darn it, I'm losing it. Uh, the shoot, the shoot. These shoots, thank you. Up there in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, I love a good porter, and especially, it seems to me, it, it always hits me around Christmas time or New Year. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to brew a porter, and I usually do every year. So, anyways, I'm happy with this one. Let me pour it up. And I just love it. It just has a perfect, perfect head on it, tan colored, nice and creamy. And the aroma right away uh, when you approach, it just smells of chocolate and just a, a sweetness. Um, this one I didn't hop up very much. Um, it is very black. The reason being is I used right around a pound and a half of the darker malts, uh, which is quite a bit actually in a five-gallon batch. Um, usually you use around 10 or 12 pounds of pale malt and then maybe half a pound to a pound of a darker malt, like a roasted barley, uh, or even a black patent malt, just like eight ounces, just to give it that color and that roastiness, um, and that, that bitter sweet or not bittersweet, but bitter chocolate kind of a flavor. But this one, I kind of went over the top, um, I think, and maybe I'll cut it back next time. But I went over the top a little bit on the darker malts, and I don't mind because I like it roasty and toasty and rich and, um, you know, naturally bitter more so than from the hops. Um, I used an ounce of East Kent Goldings uh, in the boil and uh, just a standard ale yeast. So uh, the fermentation was excellent. I watched it uh, over the course of about 10 days to two weeks. And it was very active right off the bat, so I was happy. And um, cold crashed it and put it in the bottle and, and bottle conditioned for about a week and a half, two weeks, and it was ready. So uh, let me have a taste. Mm, it's just delicious. I can't, I'm not bragging on myself, but sometimes you make a batch of beer and it just turns out the way you wanted it. And uh, this one has a lot of um, really roasted um almost almost a burnt toast but i'm not a big fan of burnt toast but dark toasted bread um very much like baker's chocolate unsweetened um a nice body to it and a long lasting uh bitterness and dryness in the mouthfeel uh, it's very pleasant to me i've handed it out to a few new uh, prospects uh, some of my friends uh, at a new church I've been going to and I'm getting a lot of positive reviews from the church people <laughs> 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 so I guess uh, that's a good sign um, but in any case uh, Greg I'll try to get you some as soon as I can I, I wished I could have got you some before this um, um, right. I love home burgers and I love baked burgers and I'm gonna always make porker. I have a porker box. Pete, 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 you're cutting out. Yeah, there's a lot of background noise. Uh, yeah, I love home brewing. I love porters. I have a couple recipes. And uh, for those of you who are listening out there, if uh, you haven't really been into porters, there's a lot of them out there that you can try. And they kind of run the spectrum of, you know, from the lighter end to a heavier end. So there's a lot to choose from. And I guarantee you there's going to be something that you'll like. So with that, I cheers to you, Beer Nuts, and cheers to our listeners. And here's to the so, good porters. Sounds delicious, B. Well done. You should All right. give yourself a slap on the back for that one. For sure. Can't complain, Jens. Amen. And, uh, 
Great to have you back, Uncle Pete, and even better to lead off the show with the homebrew. And another thing that I truly miss from Michigan is I have not yet procured brewing equipment for the different uh, different equipment that will be necessary to brew without a 66 degree cellar year round or with no cellar. So, but we'll get there someday. I've been quite, as a side note, I've been quite active. Actually, I have a, a whiskey barrel stout in the bottle already, and been drinking that. Ooh. And uh, f- uh, fermenting right now, I have a apricot peach cinnamon mead uh, melomel going. Whoa! And uh, that's not going to be ready till Christmas, at least. But it's very looking very good and smelling very good. Well, that's all. That's all I want for Christmas is a, a <laughs> okay. bottle of that meat. <laughs> you you got one, Santa Claus. I'll send him a note. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of that, I picked up your basswoods from the meeting room in Sonoida, Arizona, oh. where we had visited. So I have ah, that for you. That, love that could be your Christmas present. All right. Hopefully, hopefully you'll I, get it much soon. Exactly. I'll try to get out there to AZ as soon as I can. All right. Sounds good. Well, let's move on to Greg in Dearborn. All right. Uh, so my beer for the evening, my porter, is from Funky Bruda uh, out of, where they are? I don't know. I forget the look here. Well, they're Florida for sure, but Funky Booty Bruda out of Oakland Park, Florida. This is their 2018 morning wood. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with a little morning wood in the evening. So this is. Anytime. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this is their, uh, their, they want to call it a breakfast beer. So this is an imperial version of their maple bacon coffee porter, which is aged in bar- bar- bourbon barrels for months. And then, um, so it has a nice smooth, smooth, uh, smoky, salty, rich combo with maple syrup, coffee, and bacon like flavor. So, uh, this comes at 13%, 50 IBUs, uh, 22 ounce bottle. I got traded for it, uh, with a gentleman down to Florida late 2018. So it's been sitting nicely in my cellar waiting for just this occasion so first pour uh first uh, impression of the pour itself as dark as could be there's a little uh reddish hue on the bottom part of the glass here can't see anything through it uh khaki like mocha head very compact bubbles and uh the majority of the head that has receded there is that thin Thin amount of uh, you know bubbles still remaining on the very uh, edge of the glass here, basically. So it's really a beautiful looking beer from the first sight. And I can also tell you that the maple is filling my room right now, so I know it's it's definitely there still. So mm, first smell, a lot of lot of maple, um, very sweet maple, uh, vanilla. Um, I mean, that's just the dominant flavors coming off this thing. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to get a first sip here. Cheers, gentlemen. Oh, yeah, that's it. All right. So more more maple, more vanilla. Oh, boy, it's, uh, you get a little bit of like a, a ashiness to it. Um, maybe a little bit of saltiness from like the bacon. But just I mean, very rich mouth pleasing beer i mean this thing is just coating my mouth so well absolutely gorgeous um mm, my goodness what more can i say about it i mean it's just absolutely it's it's not like it's uh it's overpowering with the bitterness from the coffee that you know since it's been since 2018 it's everything's mellowed perfectly so it's everything's just subtle enough except for that maple and that vanilla maybe from those bourbon barrels but this is absolutely delicious. I highly recommend anybody seek this out from Funky Buddha, if, especially if you're down in Florida. It seems like they have always a, a well-stocked shelf in all the stores down there of this, and definitely worth getting. Mm. Anybody else had this? Can't say that I've had that one, but the other a few offerings from Funky Buddha I've had have really enjoyed. But that one sounds very, very tasty. And the barrel, I will say the barrel is still there. There's just a slight tinge of bourbon in there. I'm sure when it was fresher in 2018, it definitely, you know, hit you a little bit harder. But, you know, I let let this obviously age for a year and a half now. So this is uh, really turning out to be a fantastic porter. So definitely, like I said, seek it out, everybody. 
It's made its way to a couple shares I've been to down here. Um, we have a lot of people who actually go down to Florida fairly regularly for stuff. So um, I've had it. And, I, we, and, of course, we get regular um, uh, the regular maple bacon porter here on, on the shelf. So. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. Um, I believe I've had it before, too. Because uh, anything with bacon in it. I, I actually was confused. I thought you were uh, talking about the morning wood from Odd Side Ales, which is a stout, right? Right. That's correct. Yeah. Both, uh, both of those are good, though. ChristopherMedia.net There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspat. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net. All right. Thanks for that review. And uh, my pleasure. I guess now we're going down to North Carolina to Ross. Okay. So I'm going to, I guess, continue the theme of uh, maple beers here. Um, mm-hmm. What I have is a uh, from Renegade Brewing um, Pancakes Maple Porter. A friend of mine uh, gave me this uh, a while back, and I've kind of been waiting to try it. It's kind of been sitting in the back of my my fridge and uh as i was going through trying to find some porters for tonight uh this caught my eye so give it a shot it's a nice dark brown not necessarily uh black but a nice dark brown you have definitely you get get the maple on the smell little good faint malt and a little bit of chocolate uh there too. You're definitely getting this uh, caramel maple smell though coming off it. Um, the head uh, had a nice uh, tan head that's retaining it fairly well, and, um, and like I said, it's a very dark brown, but uh, but not quite opaque beer. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little little taste now. Oh, that's really not what I was expecting. So I was expecting this to be really sweet, and it's and it's really not. It um, it's it's a nice uh, balanced even. I mean, it is it is obviously slightly sweet just due to the maple, but it isn't um, it isn't like I would have said uh, if we want to compare it to the funk the regular funky Buddha maple bacon porter. It's nowhere near as sweet as that. This is a, a much more um, even drink. Um, not necessarily you know breakfasty desserty at all. It's uh, got more of a little coffee kick to it as well as on the taste. Oh yeah, that's um, that's really good. Um, so we've got um, we've definitely got the some maple flavor there, but without being overly sweet. And you're definitely getting a little bit of chocolate there, um, and just these uh, these flavors that are they're hanging around, a little smokiness. It's actually got a little bit of. Um, of an aftertaste that's hanging around like you did have um, like you did have breakfast maybe maybe some pancakes like something after you have that that leftover uh, um, that leftover taste after you've you've had some meat that you've soaked up in the syrup that was with the pancakes whether it was a sausage or a bacon you're getting um, getting oh some, my god you're, you're killing me Ross Jesus <laughs> you're getting some of that taste too no, I'm, you know you know you know what I'm saying when you when you clean up the plate a little bit you're getting that uh that taste is kind of coming through. oh I can taste it too Jesus <laughs> but uh, that's what's what's getting me was is this really isn't um isn't really super sweet it uh, I was kind of expecting it to be on the sweeter side and it's really not it's um it's it was really it's nice and 
it's a nice um, even flavor and uh, and it's got this little aftertaste that's hanging around like I said that reminds you of having just finished breakfast mm. yeah I'm liking that that was that's pretty good I've got one more can in my fridge so keep that for a little bit pull it out Look, lucky yeah, I had really, all right well, I, I don't know that I had anything from these guys before either um, these cans uh, showed up from, I guess a friend of mine drove back from Colorado at some point and brought them with him I think Sweet. Uh, I'm jealous you guys got all these great maple adjuncts, and uh, we're actually going to review just a solid everyday porter, which isn't a bad thing because it is a porter episode. But thank you for those great reviews. Yeah. Sounds like a beer that I would cherish. Some nice little smokiness hanging around later, too. It's, that's, this mm. is I like it, yeah. Sounds awesome. All right. Well, I am going to turn it over to Steve V because we are in his backyard. I happen to be out in uh, the L.A. area on business and fortunate enough to hook up. Always great when we were able to get together as beer nuts. And uh, this was a off-the-radar brewery that I didn't know about that uh, Steve has introduced me to. And I can tell you that I'm very pleased with all the beers that I've had in my flight. We have saved the porter for laughs. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve V to tell you about Shulb and the the beer we're about to taste. Take it away, Steve. So uh, Shulb's been around for a couple of years. I suppose any long time when I come to a brewery, this is where I take them to. Um, just up and down their lineup is it's always solid. Um, just everything is is is. I, I've never had a bad beer here, and and. I'll, doesn't matter if it's a sour, doesn't matter if it's an uh, IPA, lager, whatever. I've always had great beer here. Um, these guys are, uh, I, there's two owners, and I want to say they're from uh, from the Milwaukee area. And that's where they learned how to brew. And, and they came out here, and they, they, they got together. And it's a family-owned business. Um, very nice people. And, and like I said, they know what they're doing, and they do it well. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I was able to get Russ out here and, and try some of these beers. So the uh, the beer that they have, or the porter, luckily they had a porter because or else we'd have been trying something else, but uh, or reviewing something else. But uh, the uh, porter we're going to have is their Contemplation Porter. It's a 6.6. Uh, it's described as rich and toasty ale filled with chocolate and coffee flavors. This tantalizing beer is brewed with an American two-row Munich crystal chocolate and black patent malts. A character-filled English yeast leaves some residue sweetness and contributes subtle oak undertones. So uh, JR's tried it. I'll let him do the first uh, uh, review of it. All right. Well, um, first thing I noticed about this beer is how dark it was. And I had it right next to a nitro stout in my flight, and it was almost as dark as the stout. You could just very... Uh, faintly detect that it was uh, maybe the darkest of dark browns versus the coal black of the stout. So it is very, very dark. So uh, I have tasted it, but I'm going to take another taste. Of it. Uh, I already described uh, very uh, very little uh, head re- retention, just a uh, you know, nice little white uh, head uh, around the uh, you know, lacing around the glass. Just around the perimeter, but nothing on top. It's all brown. So I taste it, and right away I get that roasted malt goodness um, with definitely uh, like coffee flavor. A um, little bit of something, maybe a toffee, caramel, vanilla, something there, just very slightly to- toasty, biscuity kind of uh, mouthfeel is, uh, I'd say, medium to full. For a porter, this is probably on the roastier, you know, higher end of the scale, as it, uh, as you would detect from the color of it being so dark. It's a uh, really a wonderful beer. It's uh, just under what a stout would taste like. It's way darker than a brown ale, so it's right there in the wheelhouse of a great toasty porter. No adjuncts, just uh, it's all from the malt. There is black patent malt in it. That maybe what gives it that little extra boosty uh, coffee roasty flavor and also the color. So uh, 
It's got a, I didn't describe the aroma, but uh, you can definitely get the same uh, same type of uh, um, aroma with the coffee and the dark roasted malt. So it's a wonderfully constructed beer. I have to, uh, just to tell you a little bit about my experience here, uh, agree with Steve. Every single beer I've had has been solid. Uh, I had a, uh, a lager at the beginning that was a, a, a Aloha lager. And um, it had passion fruit. What, uh, what else is in it? Passion fruit. Really, really uh, interesting lager with like some fruit flavor in it. Mango and uh, passion fruit. Really, really good. Uh, normally, uh, you know, flavors you find in a wheat beer. So not to get too far off the porter path, but, you know, uh, like I said, really, really good cross-section of beers. The Fog Topper Nitro Stout was also a big hit. Uh, kind of takes this one to another level. But the Contemplation Porter is a, is a winner, and it's a probably, a, you know, a perfect representation of what a, a solid porter non-adjunct porter should be so the the brewery is really pretty cool laid out it's like a big uh, open air like almost like a garage type thing with all the vessels and on the one side and then a big open area where there, there's a cornhole tournament being played if you're hearing any bang in the background it's the cornholes hitting fortunately we're in a little uh, like side room here that is hopefully taking most of the intrinsic noise away but um really great uh, vibe here great beers and uh thanks steve v for introducing me to one of your one of his local honey holes i'll give it back to steve yeah just going back to as far as the beer itself um yeah compared to the uh to the stout that we have i mean that stout was a lot more coffee flavored and and you really taste it this one's here on the brink of it you don't really get it you get a lot of the toastiness from that oak um, and it's and it describes it as sweetness, but it, it, I, I, I sense a little bit more bitterness, um, almost more like a iced coffee, maybe a little watered down coffee. I would I would describe it as, um, but not as not that bitter to where it's you know like you don't want to drink it. This is more this is more subtle and and like I said, not I, you can drink this all day. It's, it, I don't see myself getting f- filled up with it, you know from from uh, too much uh, sweetness or anything like that. It's something you can drink and enjoy for a long time. All right, so there you have it. Shulb Brewing, Torrance, California. If you ever get to the Los Angeles area, look this place up. It's a hidden gem. I really appreciate uh, Steve uh, bringing me here. Anybody else have another beer or anything to add? Any hipster tips or news in the uh, beer industry world? Anybody... No, I yeah, I don't think I've heard anything other than the only thing flooding my market these days is the coronavirus, but that's enough. We don't even want to talk about that right now, right? Yeah, we made it through almost the whole episode without mentioning that, and you just ruined it, Greg. Sorry about that, boys. But, you know, you can't get around it. You know, I think European travel has been suspended now, and I just, just heard the NBA season yeah. is, like, completely stopped. So I no, don't know no what fans a lot of NCAA March Madness. <laughs> so we can't really ignore and what's happening around us. And I'm getting ready to fly home on a plane tomorrow, and I think that's probably the last plane I'll be taking for a while. It looks like we're going to be holed up. And fortunately, I still have a large section of my uh, my great favorites from my cellar in Michigan. Still have a closet full of good Michigan beers. And uh, so, um, you know what? If we just have to stay home and drink our cellar now, that's a we'll, guess what we'll do. Uh, as, that sounds like a highly recommended uh, solution to the problem, I think. I like it. Couldn't that's agree a, more, Uncle Pete. So let JR, beer save the day. JR posted an uh, article um, earlier this week that uh, noted that we're getting the first, I guess, um, after effect of the uh, uh, Boston beer dogfish head um kind of buy out so that there's a uh, a utopious aged uh, worldwide stout that's being released on the 27th oh uh, yeah oh my gosh we'll uh, we'll see how that goes i hopefully have some friends up in delaware who are uh, arranging to, to run around and pick some up so well, russ is being kind because it was really a, i was begging him to go back to delaware and get me some <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is i'll be up um uh, I'll be up the weekend after the release. I'm heading up that way after the, uh, the week that next weekend, that first weekend in April. 
Um, so if there's any still on the shelves, I can definitely pick up some from at that point. So, that point. so this is an audio meme. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, but but, uh, but you know Scott. So Scott said if he had uh, if he had Friday off, he'd definitely go out and, uh, on the 27th and and try to pick, get some as well. Uh, so you're saying there's a chance. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. All right, everybody. Well, it sounds like uh, we tasted some great beers and really, really thrilled to have you back, Pete. I'll make the next episode. And uh, thanks all, to all our listeners. Um, if Chris were here, he would be saying that we are available on Sprecher, um, Spotify, is it Apple Music now? Uh, I don't know all the... Uh, but um, we, I've been trying to podcast platforms. There you go. So... So please, uh, you know, uh, thanks for downloading. Thanks for listening. Um, if Chris were here, he would do this better. But uh, one thing I do do well is introduce our trip to Mexico. So uh, I assure you that the flights to Mexico have not been canceled on the beer nuts. So if everybody's ready, as they say in old Mexico City. Hey, hey, ChristopherMedia.net There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at HomeDepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for listening, and thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net.